And it's incredible how, after you learn to identify these nuances, it's impossible to look at the ground the same way again. When I start explaining how to identify these colors in nature, I like to keep it as simple as possible, because the truth is that anyone can learn as long as they know where to look. The first thing I always recommend is observing exposed riverbanks, especially after rain, because the water reveals layers that are normally hidden. In riverbeds, pay attention to the rolled stones. They often have hues that reveal the path they've taken. On natural rock walls, I like to look at the horizontal bands, because each line tells a different geological story. And of course, even a backyard can hide clues, especially in regions with a history of mining. The secret is to walk slowly, let your eye get used to the nuances, and notice what stands out. If a color catches your eye, don't ignore it. It could be the beginning of a great discovery. Now, regarding what each shade usually indicates, I always say that pattern is your best friend. Yellowish and orangey tones generally come from the presence of iron oxides, and this often accompanies gold-bearing areas because iron and gold circulate through similar veins. Greenish tones can signal copper minerals, and where there is copper, there are often other heavy metals as well. Bluish or grayish tones, especially if the rock is denser and has an altered appearance, can indicate kimberlites, and that's where many people get excited because kimberlite is the rock that carries diamonds to the surface. When I find these tones, I always make a point of comparing them to the surrounding soil. If the color doesn't match anything in the environment, it's a strong sign that something special is there. And it's incredible how, after you learn to identify these nuances, it's impossible to look at the ground the same way again.